think I think Bruce Lee had a message when he taught, and uh, of course one of the the goals was, uh, as I said earlier, to try to achieve the equality of, of just the di people of different different ex ethnic backgrounds. But on the other hand, uh, Bruce was trying to show us a way in which we could make ourselves better people. And the way I look at it is that, unfortunately, we have to go through the physical aspect of, 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 of entering into the spiritual essence of the, of the, of the martial arts, and, uh, which, which I feel is the most important, the final, the final plateau in one's life. And, and the reason I say that is because at that, the composition of the class as far as ethnicity was uh, a little bit of everything. There were, there were black people. In fact, the first student was a black uh, fellow, Jesse Glover, and uh, James DeMille, he was, uh, I think, uh, more Filipino than anything. Uh, uh, we had uh, Charlie Wu, who was Chinese, and myself, and, and there were several other uh, uh, white kids under uh, Doug Palmer, uh, Joe Cowles, uh, uh, and other, other uh, black uh, students also, so uh, Bruce didn't uh, delineate and say, I'm only going to take so many blacks in or so many Chinese or anything like that. He just left it to uh, who came in, and if they proved themselves to be of character, why, well, he let them in. When Bruce was in the class teaching, I mean, there was no uh, voices in the background or anything. He had he had a complete attention from all of us, and he he worked just until we dropped almost, and we just thoroughly enjoyed and respected it, and and felt that uh, uh, we, we we felt like it was just like reading the Bible. We we swore by it, you know. And he and he was a kind of a person that when he told you that he was going to teach you something, if you had any doubt in your mind whether it was going to work or not, he personally showed you why it was working, and there, there was not an ounce of doubt in your mind uh, after that that that, the, that what he had taught you was not. Uh, completely useful. We've had, from time to time, we had uh, uh, athletes that were in there that were that were pretty coordinated and pretty fast, and obviously, uh, from what I just told you, there, occasionally there were people that sort of thought that they had it down pretty pat, and they would uh, get a little bit arrogant, and of course, Bruce would sense that, and he would uh, just sort of nonchalantly say, okay, well, come on, let's, let's you know, let's, let's see what you can do, and uh, and uh, he was so far above any of us anyhow that the minute that we, we tried to do anything like that, he just put us down as if you were handling a little baby and it, uh, it made you a believer in a hurry. And so uh, if you had any, any feelings in your body of, of, of arrogance or, or, um, or maybe a little bit of uh, boastfulness, uh, you, he put you right down to where you were at ground zero. When he was in Hong Kong, I think he felt that uh, uh, the Wing Chun system was probably the most realistic in terms of, of uh, uh, economy of motion and, uh, and uh, uh, a lot, lot uh, minimizing the uh, classicalness of things. And so, although he was well versed in the uh, Charlie Foot, the uh, 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 praying mantis, and a lot of other styles like that, uh, he could stand in front of you and imitate, you know, 90% of them, probably better than people who were masters and the others could, but uh, he felt that this was the most realistic thing. And of course, he always went by the axiom that the most simple, direct uh, action was, was the most realistic. And uh, he likened it to uh, swimming on dry land versus swimming in the water. He said, he said, some point in time, if, you're, if you continue to swim on dry land, uh, you got to get into the action, you got to get into the water. But when he came over here, why, he, he uh, pretty much stuck with the Wing Chun uh, system, but uh, along with his theory of economy of motion and practicalness, he he uh, modified it to what he thought was right. And since then, uh, I have had students of, of a pretty firm background in uh, Wing Chun that have come to my club here uh, uh, and, and wondered what we were doing because they didn't see too much resemblance. But uh, uh, as I think that the, the, the testament in it is that uh, Bruce to finally developed a, a uh, fighting method called what he, what he called Jeet Kune Do that encompasses uh, the, the most simplified thing but the most realistic thing. So uh, uh, I think his whole point was that uh, uh, at some point in time you need to subtract rather than keep adding. In the movies you have to do things that, uh, that become more impressive in terms of what the, what the audience sees. But, uh, you only have to look into the background and realize it's a message there. The message is that uh, 
it's not one of violence, but it's one of love and harmony to get along with each other. You know, to be able to find out who you are so that you can, you can also re then react to somebody else. And maybe, I think we're all put on this world to do something, to create something, leave a message before you die that, that, that inspires somebody else to, to become better than they are. And I think it's our responsibility. I think Bruce left that message with each one of us, that it's our responsibility to create and leave that impression upon the, those around us so that they can be better involved and better people themselves because of what Bruce